So guys, I get asked this question all the time. How do I make my home feel warm and inviting, but still feel contemporary? Well, the answer is actually organic modern. And I'm going to show you why in this really groovy room breakdown. <laughs> Okay guys, so in this room breakdown, I'm going to explain to you what elements do and don't contribute to an organic modern space. Now, this is a perfect example. This is a lovely contemporary space, but there's parts of it that are nice, but parts of it are definitely not inviting. It just doesn't make you want to come hang in this space. For instance, Rugs are there for a very specific reason, guys. They are to isolate a seating arrangement in space. This one clearly does not. Why is half the sofa on and half not? Secondly, the palette of this space is decidedly cool. Everything is either a cool gray or a cool blue. So the reality of it is the palette skews it off. The formality of the space skews it off. These are two sofas facing each other. They're too far apart to actually have a conversation, but they are facing each other in a formal way. So that's very structured, but it's not warm and inviting. Now, the only upholstery in the space are actually the two sofas. There's nothing else to absorb sound. There's no window treatments. There's not even another little bench pillow uh, beside the fireplace. There's nothing. So you've really got a room that's kind of very sterile, yet it's still a contemporary space that's pleasant to look at. Now, let's look at the difference between a space like this and a space that is similar, but it's an organic modern space. Oh my gosh, don't you want to breathe a little easier just taking a look at this space? All of a sudden, you just want to kind of come in and snuggle up on this sofa. Why? There's a number of reasons. Number one, the natural palette. Oh, it just makes it sing. It's still neutral, still soft, but the cast to it is warm as opposed to those cool grays that we saw in the other room. Secondly, you have a lot of kind of textural stories. You have two sofas that have a little bit of uh, fabric on them and pillows. And then you also have two chairs over on the opposite side. So it's not quite as structured a format. And those chairs are done in a warm, yummy leather. So you look like you could curl up neck in them and read a book. Now, there's definitely a fireplace here, just like there was in the other room, but it's much more of kind of a warm, yummy stone and plaster statement. So it feels much more approachable and it feels like it would actually give out more heat. Uh, the use of natural materials is fabulous here. You've got the natural wood ceiling. You've got a natural coffee table there. You also have a beautiful kind of hand cast lamp on the side and a pot in the back with the tree in it. So these rooms are very similar in terms terms of their intellectual composition, but they feel completely different because of these elements. So let's show you guys how you can get some of this feeling warm and inviting for your home. So when you're thinking organic modern, you're thinking international style meets Zen. That's a super yummy combination, right? Because you've got all of the lovely linear lines like you see from international style, still feels nice and contemporary, but the palette shift is wonderful. The texture play is really rich and inviting. So it really makes the space be a space that you want to hang in. So number one element that you have to control is you want to study your palette. Now that means everything, floors, walls, ceilings, guys, all the upholstery, everything. You want it to be a little bit on the warm, neutral, and or monochromatic. It's definitely a softer tonal story than it is lots of bright colors or strong contrasts, all right? Monochromatic would actually be fine in an organic modern only because you're gonna play with textures, which is actually the number two element that you've got to control. Now, it is really the big story here. When you think about organic modern, you're bringing in nature to meet international style. So nature has texture, right? You've got wools, you've got boucles, you've got natural woods, chunky stuff, linens, patinaed metal. That's always a really good one. Something that's got a little bit of age to it. So texture and the texture contrast. I love that texture 
communicates this style so beautifully. I love these chairs. They're the super long haired wool right next to that toothy tree trunk of a table. Ugh, these are fabulous and you just want to hang in these spaces. Now, the number three element that you have to really consider is your forms need to feel organic. What does that mean? It means curves, it means softened angles, it means a little bit of irregularity, maybe a live wood edge. I love this little cube table that's done out of a natural chunk of wood. That's very sort of warm, organic, modern. I love the curved alcove in this wall that's got the shelves in it. Very unexpected. Notice that it's all monochromatic and a texture story, but it's got these groovy kind of sexy softened curves. Now, not everything has to go this way, but you have to introduce some of that into there. Otherwise, it's going to start to feel uh, too much on the international side and less zen-like and less inviting. Okay, so the number four element that you want to consider is asymmetry. Now, here's the deal about asymmetry, is that you can do a formal layout like we saw in the first big photograph that we showed you, but it doesn't have to be that way. One of the hallmarks of a contemporary layout is asymmetry. So if you want to have an unexpected and warm and interesting space, you want to think a little bit about asymmetry because it ties in that sort of curved or unexpected point or change. So I love the comparison of these two mirrors hanging together. One's much larger and lower, one's smaller and a little bit higher up. That's a great look together with that free form bench that's sitting below it. That's a beautiful example of how asymmetry happens in nature and helps us communicate that warm, inviting kind of organic modern feel. Now, the fifth element that you're taking into consideration is a bit of a mashup of a couple of style statements. Minimalist, Scandi, and Japandi. Why is it minimalist? Because the space itself feels clutter free. That's super important. If you have too much stuff in an organic modern space, like too many plants, for instance, it's going to go off kilter and lean too far into one direction and you want to keep it balanced. Why does it feel scandy? It feels scandy because there's a lot of the natural woods and unfinished woods that kind of feel light and open, like is reflected in the scandy style. Now, it's definitely got a little bit of that Japandi vibe to it as well because it celebrates the idea of wabi-sabi. Those are fabulous things to consider when you're looking at an organic modern space because you want to incorporate the texture and the toothiness and the storylines that those things have. Like I love the image of this table that obviously was found in some sort of backyard somewhere and it's covered in mold on the top, but it's a beautiful piece. So that kind of thing brings in that warmth, brings in that humanity, brings in that story and makes it feel inviting and a place that you want to learn more about and be in. So you see guys, organic modern isn't that difficult as long as you follow those five basic rules. Now, be sure and join Design Space, check out this video, and I'll see you soon.